change any nation the gospel can change any country the gospel can change any family it can change your spouse the gospel of jesus that turned saul to a poor that made a hallowed mary magdalene to becoming an evangelist when the gospel is preached with power signs and wonders and is embraced it has the capacity to change a sinner to a sin There is power enough in this house to bring deliverance to every one of you afflicted. This is Illumination Today with Dr. Isaac Idahosa. When you find yourself in the realm and the class of God, it's an open door unto you is given to now is an open door to catch up in the realm and the class of God because in that class or realm all things become possible to him that believes nothing shall be impossible and with God all things are possible to him that believes It's not everybody that does the work of God. Not many wise, not many prudent. No, it's by His mercy. We receive the ministry by His mercy. When you receive teachings that scare you, that don't draw you to the cross, that don't edify you, don't take it. It's a garbage. The gospel should release hope. Go to places you are appreciated. Go to places you will have reasons to stretch. Go to places they will place the man on what you carry. When you hang around people who don't respect what you carry, friends, you cannot go far. Don't hang around people that will always intimidate you. No matter what you carry, if you are not in demand, you cannot be used. And what you don't use, you lose. First Corinthians chapter 16. Verse 1, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order, as I have given order, I have passed an instruction that must be duly followed to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. And after having given an order, he went on to say in verse Eight. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Pentecost is 50. It is a kind of a routine after every 50 days to come for a feast, a festival of love. I'm going to tarry until the next gathering of the saints, until the next feasting, until the next celebration. After each celebration, there is a need for you to withdraw and wait on God for the next move. I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. I'm laying a foundation of what I call open doors. The reason I got to tarry is this. Many things are no longer left in the hands of God. They've been released, but there are automatic forces of darkness that intend to always thwart, hijack, divert the doors or the blessings of God's sins. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like that of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Your waiting time is not a wasted time. Let me tell your neighbor your waiting time is not a wasted time. Why waiting? Why fasting? Why services? Why the commitments? why the addiction to god why the uncommon faithfulness like you've put on because of verse 9 everyone read with me loud and clear for a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are many adversaries a great door has been opened it's not about to be open it's been opened see with the eyes of faith that it's been opened when you change the way you look at things the things you look at will definitely change a great door and effectual and i'm gonna dive into what really is a door what really is a door not to talk 
about putting an adjective calling it great one what enforces what attracts what influences a great door a great door and effectual has been opened but it's not without adversaries so anytime you see an adversary smell a door adversaries don't just go on platter of gold they are attracted by great door especially when you catch an insight that is just about time it happened so when it's about time for a change of level you find out an enemy called adversary shows up now we are not without consolation he said be sober and vigilant for your adversary the devil is running to and fro seeking for whom to devour but you are not the whom are you whom no. is your name whom no. all right so i'll say to your neighbor i'm not the whom no. all right so he can't reach at me because i'm not the whom where i am situated he can't get there psalm 91 he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty now for a great door and effectual is open unto me now realize this when you catch the revelation what door is jesus said in roma uh, revelation chapter 3 let's quickly get to that scripture revelation chapter number 3 in verse 7 and 8 and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write this thing said he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of david he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth so he number one he began to say to you i am the one writing to you church of philadelphia and he said write this the angel of the church is the pastor of the church or the general overseer of the church he said write these things and I want to let you know from who it's coming so you can know the strength of my commitment to my words. I am he that is true. There is no guile in me. There is no fiction in me. There is no fallacy. Whatever I say is true. Forever, O God, thy word is settled. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the lie. So, you know, when, when you receive an announcement on television, you want to find out who is behind the announcement so you can take it with seriousness. He said, now write these things from me that is true. Me that is holy in other words i carry the attributes the nature of god i have the key of david and not just that with the key of david i open and when i open no man can walk no man can shut and when i shut i remember again jesus said i am the door of the sheep i am the door of the sheep so he has both the knife and the meat i am the door of the sheep now he says i have the key of david i can choose to open up myself to you i have the key he said to simon he said upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail and i will give to you the keys of the kingdom this day i declare in the name of the lord if your amen is the loudest receive the key of the kingdom now hear this he said i have the key of david yet i am the door so door is not just an entrance into like having some cash it's not totally wrong but it's not all about the door he is the door jesus is the door of the sheep and um, through him we can go in and out and find pasture for our souls you are watching illumination today Here he said, I have the key of David. 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 And what is the key of David? Expressly praise. Remember in Revelation chapter 5, when this guy by the name John, the beloved at the island of Patmos, found a book that was sealed, a scroll sealed, destiny sealed, that couldn't be accessed or opened. Angels could not open it. Uh, that's why I pity those who worship angels because they can't help you in times of need. Angels should be your servants. You should empower them by the word of God. Praise the Lord. And then nobody could open the book. An elder came and said, stop weeping. We have found a man from the lineage of the tribe of Judah. He is qualified to open the book. I declare this day your books will be open. Yeah. Your destinies will have expression. Yeah. Every door shut against you. If your amen is the loudest, I command it open now. 
I have the key of David. I open and no man can show when I open. What does that mean? When I choose, now, now we have realized Jesus is the door. I can choose to open up myself to any individual and nobody can stop me from opening. I can choose to reveal myself as Jehovah Rapha. I can choose to reveal myself as Jehovah Jireh. I can choose to reveal myself as Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. Whatever I, whoever I choose to reveal myself to, I open because I have the key and I am the door. Woo. I have the key of David and when I open the door, no man can shut. Why? Because I am the door. I am the door. I can choose to open myself up to you. Now I prophesy. May God open up himself to you. No wonder Paul said in Philippians 3 and 10 that I man know him. I want him to open up himself to me. Deuteronomy chapter 29, 29. The secret things belong to God. But those things which have been revealed, the door, the part of God he chooses to reveal to you is the one he reveals to you. One cannot force God to reveal himself to him. One cannot force God. You see, friends, when you choose to know God, you have an encounter or an experience. As a, as a heart pants after the water brooks, even so my soul. I am he that opened it and no man can shut. And when I shut the door, when I shut myself against you, no man can help you out. When I shut the door, no man can open the door. When I open the door, no man can shut it. Because I am in control of myself. I am the door. I am the door. I am the door. I'm not a door. I am the door. All that doors access me, they run into me. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous gets in the inside and they are saved. Receive safety. Yeah. I say receive safety. Yeah. This is the last day of the month of April. I say receive safety. Yeah. As you walk into the month of great grace and open doors, receive safety. Yeah. So open door means open Jesus. Oh my word. And so when we say door, Jesus and all that makes him happy is a door. All that makes him gladden is a door. All that makes him joyful is a door. And so, you know, literally within door, when I say I have an open door, some money is in your pocket. It's not totally correct, but it's not totally wrong. When we say door, literally we think progress. Spiritually progressing. The word referred to spiritual progress. Spiritual progress commands natural progress, commands physical progress. If you must progress physically, you must begin by progressing spiritually. The spiritual controls the natural, all right? The supernatural controls the natural. The celestial commands the terrestrial. here so when we say open door what we mean jesus and all that makes him happy one of the key things that makes him happy is when you are a seeker of the kingdom when you are born again when you are a seeker of his kingdom matthew 6 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and what and all all other things should be followed. So if I were you, I would cast my weight, my strength, my talk, my everything concerning seeking after God. Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all these things, whatever it is, falls into all these things. Mafu shall be added unto you. So you won't lose God, you won't lose what you need. Why? When God takes the lead, you can't be left behind. When God takes the lead, you will not be left behind. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, when we say open door, we mean spiritual progress. Please write it down. When we say open door, we mean spiritual progress. Now, open door number one. Deeper revelation. Deeper insight. Revelation 3.8. Deeper revelation, deeper insight is open door. Can I say deeper revelation? Deeper insight is open door. 
an open door unto uncommon activities of God when you are involved with an encounter that brings about a deeper knowing of God is an open door when you know Jesus uncommonly is an open door verse 8 of Revelation chapter 3 I know thy works behold I set before thee an open door and no man can shut it when God opens it no man can shut it but when you try to open it yourself you will struggle all your life to keep it door open what you struggle to get you will struggle to keep again what you struggle to get you will struggle to keep you can deceive anybody and everybody but you can't deceive God all right I know your works I know how you do it I know how you go about it and uh, he said behold because I know oh my word oh my word there is a word of hope here he said I know your works I know your pay packet I know that your salary cannot buy you the kind of car I want for you I know that your salary cannot build for you a befitting house I know that your pay pack cannot send your children to the best of schools that's why I have chosen to take upon me to open unto you oh my word there are some of you here you will no longer live on your salaries your amen is offensive your income is too small to make the kingdom proud I know your budget but when you make God your priority God takes over your budget and when God's project becomes your project God budgets for his projects oh my word God will always budget for his projects he will now even the lilies are God's projects and God budgets for them if God can take care of the lilies if God can take care of the flowers that are today and are no long tomorrow you are much more precious don't worry for what to eat how to feed where to stay what to drive your heavenly father knows who have need for all these things God seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness as from this day forward may your problem become God's problem <laughs> casting all your cares upon for he cares for you he cares for you he cares come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest that is an exchange come with your weakness for my strength come with your pains for my solution come with your darkness for my life for I am meek and lowly at heart and you will find rest for your soul oh my word in the name of Jesus Christ the son of God what money cannot do God will do for you Arabasha, I say, what money cannot do, God will do for you. Yeah. What money cannot do, God will do for you. Yeah. Look beyond money, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith. He said, I know your words, Pastor. I know your words, prophets. I know your words, woman. It cannot feed you. It cannot put good meals on your table. That's why I've gone ahead of you to open unto you. I set before you an open door because the inflow of cash cannot give to you a befitting life. I have set before you, not behind you, not after you are dead. While you are still alive, you will become a witness of the goodness of God. I set before you an open door. That's why. God says, not the door man sets up when you upset the man, he unseats you. Mm. Yes, not men that want to modulate and regulate your emotion. No, no. When you make God your hobby, you don't lobby any man. Ah. <laughs> Let me tell your neighbor, when you make God your hobby, you won't have to lobby any man. Have more of God, less of men. When God becomes much more and men are lesser, then disappointment is managed. But when you make men more than God, you are bound to suffer a shipwreck. Talking to somebody here? Thank you, Lord. Verse, verse 8. He said, I said before thee an open no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength. Full of kataba. Who am I talking to here? He said, you have a little strength. God is aware. Don't ever come before God in the area of your strength. Come before God in the area of your weakness. Let God know how, how weak you are without him. Let God know how, how hopeless you are without him. Let God know that you are not only, he's not only your, he's not just a hope to you. He's the only hope. He's not just a source. He's the only source. I said before you an open door. I have said before you, why have I chosen to do that? Your strength is little. Your strength is little. Your strength is little. 
financial strength is little why have you not completed that project your financial strength is little and that have but then look at it you have kept my word and have not denied my name it's not enough for your strength to be little and have not you are not able to keep the word of god if this word abide in you and you abide in me you shall ask what you will and it shall be given unto you <clears throat> so deeper revelation access to god uncommonly how revelation chapter 4 after this i looked and behold a door my word was open in heaven a door part of him was open in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up Peter. come on in a voice when you hear the voice of god is a lifter you don't come to church and get more depressed than you came when you come to church hopeless you return back with hope and it's a gospel hope that maketh not ashamed christ in me the hope of glory jesus in me the fullness of my satisfaction the voice that talks with me says to me what come on feeder abaya no wonder jesus stood by that little gate and said little damsel talita kumi rise everywhere you have been downcasted i declare rise up from there rise up from that position in the name of jesus say i am rising down the bible said in psalm 6 isaiah 60 verse 1 arise shine for your light has come and the glory of god is risen upon you arise and shine that's not what the word says say, arise shine what follows rising is shining botula barada what follows rising is what shine. loud and clear hear me tell your neighbor left and right neighbor yeah. what follows rising yeah. is shining yeah. the louder the better say to your neighbor neighbor yeah. what follows rising yeah. is shining yeah. god has you to shine you have your own self to rise god will not do the rising for you just like he will not do the shining for god did you hear me the glory of the star is different from that of the moon the moon's different from that of the sun you owe yourself a duty to rise he said rise up take your journey you owe yourselves duty to rise god owes you the duty to make you up shine but when the light comes now he said let your light so shine you see when you carry the light every other things follow you when you carry the light every other thing does what follows you but when you enter into the dark even your shadows don't follow you even your shadow hates to live in the dark walk in the light walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh and what is the loss of the flesh when you walk after the dictates of your own renewed mind the mind that is not conformed or controlled by the word of god <laughs> so he said come up feeder why would god always why will he step you up all the time god would always step you up all the time anytime god want to bless you physically he steps you up spiritually so that the spiritual can be the container for the reception of the carnal things come on people as god comes upon you or empties himself on you today it's because he has found something he wants to add to your lives Amen. the present spiritual level cannot contain it so that's why he has to jack you up anything can fall on its own but nothing rises on its own nothing you require a force greater than the one keeping you down to move you up you require a force greater than the one keeping you at a particular level now i am here with the force of the holy ghost i declare wherever you are move forward from this <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i'm sure you don't pay for saying amen and you watching me by television i say wherever you are move forward from this move forward spiritually move forward financially in the name of jesus and i prophesy i said i prophesy the mouth you use in saying amen you won't use the same mouth to cry amen. can i hear that amen again 
After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up thither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. I will show you. Can you see the door unto uncommon knowledge, uncommon insight? When we say open door, open door, what manages the literal doors are spiritual doors. Not just managing them, but attracting them to you. Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Hear this closely. Know him is like, like an interwovenness, a coagulation. Knowing him is like a meeting, a measure. That I might know him so that himself and myself are inseparable. I shared with you last week here when Ananias and Sapphira came and lied before who now? Before Peter. What did Peter say? He said, why have you so lied against the Holy Ghost? Literally speaking, they were seeing Peter, but he told them they lied against the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they are now one. Lying to me is lying before God. You get to a point where you and God become one. Jesus said, who sees me sees the Father. I and the Father are one. We are inseparable. So that's why I say it is hard for you to kick against the prick. If you do this to any, you have done it unto me. Anybody who touches you, touches God. You know why? Because you are the apple of God's own eyes. Let me tell you the mistake people make. You are like the rock of offense. If anybody hits you, it's pieces. So on no account must you lose. You are not born a loser. And if the rock hits him, is grounded into powder. Some we use the power of God, some use the powder of something else. If anybody hates you, he's spelling him a bad day for himself. If you vex a little bit, heaven thunders. Uh, there is no way I can touch. Imagine you, you must react. Now, do you know what I'm saying? You must react. Now, this is who you are to God. So anybody. You, God must react to the act because if the science is happy to say that action and reaction are equal and opposite but with God actions and reaction are not if the, if, if the, if the enemy shall come like a flood the spirit of God will raise a standard Hayaba if they come in one way there are seven provisions for your escape <laughs> so you cannot be caught unawares you are the apple of god's own eyes you are so special that god can kill anybody for you god is a killer yet not a murderer <laughs> i say he can kill anybody for you yet he's not a murderer i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here he said, I'm he that kill it and I make it alive. When God kills, he justifies his killing. Nobody calls him a murderer. He kills without an evidence. Because he doesn't come down himself. He uses, he uses his creations to undo the creation. Therefore, anybody who is trying to touch God, touch your life from today, you, they will meet with the dangers of God. what God decided to make of me I'm a chosen generation someone once asked me who are you I said you want to know who I am how much time have you got for me mm -hmm. because I'm the apple of God's own eyes I'm a chosen generation I'm a royal priesthood I'm a peculiar person do you want to know who I am I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus do you still want to know who I am I am that I am in the I amness of the Almighty. Uh, do you still want to know who I am? I belong to the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, do you? He said, No, no, no. I said, Let me see, tell you who I am. I serve the God that is bigger than the biggest. Uh, I serve the God that is greater than the greatest. He's stronger than the strongest. He's wiser than the wisest. He's richer than the richest. That's the God I serve. The rock of ages, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning stars. He is and was and will ever be. Am I talking to somebody? He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the last. He's the first and the last. 
He's the lily of the valley. Do you want to know who I am? I saw the ancient day God. I saw the God Almighty. Lift your voice and say, I am the apple of his eye. They sit down. You know why? Uh, people don't know who you are. That's why they mess around. That's why they deny you help. Jesus said to that woman in, Ma in John chapter 4, said, give me water to drink. And she was hesitant. Jesus said to her, if only you knew the gift of God and who is demanding water from you, you will be in a hurry to release it. Because in turn, I will have given to you what? Rivers of living water. You will have no need to be here to fetch. I s command your unnecessary labors to cease. Can I hear that amen? I say I command your unnecessary labors to cease. I command your unnecessary labors to cease. What used to bring you pain will bring you joy. Can I hear that amen loud and clear? I will show you things, look at that, come up feeder, you can't get it from this level of understanding.